What's up, Lore Masters? So, one of the things that a small but vocal minority has been asking me recently is, why do I continue to defend Discovery continuity in my breakdowns? I'm not a fan of Discovery, so what's the point of contending with these types of controversies when they appear? It's somewhat amusing to me, as a lot of people who are fans of Star Trek Discovery scream to the nines about how I hate the show and never defend it. I honestly can't win no matter what I do. However, when we get down to it, if there's one thing most reasonable people can agree on about our fandom, it's that we're divided against each other. Hell, it's so bad that when I attempted to engage Bill Smith of the Trek Geeks podcast on Twitter and try to convince him to tell me why he stood with CBS against Axanar so publicly, to just explain it to me why he's so passionate about it, he ultimately decides to mute me after doing about 10 tweets, none of them that could have simply told me what his point is. Which is unfortunate because when I analyze the Trek Geeks podcast and what they're about, it seemed like an interesting and fun endeavor. But unfortunately, because our society is so jaded and we're all so easy to hate and distrust each other, we stopped having faith in the person on the other side and just assume that everyone that doesn't believe what we believe is acting in bad faith. So, when I'm asked why I'll speak out against common misconceptions of Discovery that are used by some to denigrate the show when they're not true, it's because I want us to be better than what we are today. Surely, if there's ever to be a dialogue between the two factions, someone has to be upfront about what is and isn't wrong with the show and why. If there are problems, then it's definitely worth a discussion, but if there's no reason to think that something is untrue, or if it's proven inaccurate, then it's important to speak out and admit it. It's okay to say, hey, I thought this wasn't consistent, I went back and looked, and apparently it is. But the show still sucks. I don't know if I'll ever talk to Bill again, nor if I'll ever interact with the Trek Geeks podcast. I certainly hope so, but in the end, it would be my desire that if Bill, or anyone who wants to know why I dislike Discovery, were to come to my channel and see my most recent stuff, assuming they can understand my humor and not get offended by it, then I would hope that they can see that I try to give Discovery a fair break. I speak up when I think it's done something right or misjudged, and I talk against the things that I don't like. It would be my sincere hope that people analyze why I don't like something and look at my ideas versus me as a person. And then maybe reach out to me or hell, just do a video trying to counter what I'm saying that doesn't add on me but just talks about the points. I don't think it would happen instantly, but I do think if more channels looked at it this way and talked about things in that manner, we would start to see a shift. Another reason, which is just as important if not more so than what I just discussed, is that I truly believe that a lot of channels have lost their way. I've spoken about this ad nauseum before, but I truly believe that credibility for our fandom is at an all-time low, at least when it comes to critics. YouTube channels that dare to go outside of doing just lists of ships and battle stats that actually give opinions, have opted to jump on bandwagons that ultimately have destroyed any real trust by opposition sides of what they advocate. A lot of us now just live in communities that are little better than echo chambers. While this is great for short-term gains, I have seen the long-term impacts of that methodology and believe that staying true, transparent, and keeping your credibility is more important than those numbers. The last piece here is one that's pretty simple. One of my core principles is that I want to believe as many true things as I can and not believe as many false things as possible. This means that if there's something that I believe to be true, like Spock clearly having emotion in at least the first season of the original series, then I'm going to be upfront about that. Because choosing not to believe something that is so clearly evident leads down to the path of oblivion. And again, as I've stated, there are plenty of reasons not to like Discovery. It does not follow continuity a lot. And if we were to focus on those things, it might be a lot better. But you know what? In the end, it's not really me. I'm not the problem. Nor would most channels or critics be, in my opinion. The problem really is the people that choose to watch the different channels, and those that choose to get on the bandwagons. People, wherever they stand on Discovery, who decide to bring their bias and politics into the entire affair. Those that bandwagon truly. I do think Discovery is a step back from where we were, from what kind of trek we were getting. But I don't really think we're going to get something worthy, something having value, until we're completely honest with ourselves and others about what Discovery does right. And I think it's worth at least entertaining the possibility that we're wrong, and that Discovery is a great show, and our bias is getting in the way. But all of these are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below.